and welcome to the August wrap-up I don't want to be doing. I am tired. Life is stressful for a variety of reasons, but this is like the third time I filmed this because I'm getting so lazy that I'm not doing a good job. So here's the deal. Every book that I read in the month of August that already has a video for it will have that video down in the description below. There will be a 24-hour readathon in which I read six books, three separate review videos, one of which I read during the 24-hour readathon, and the first in my Foster Mom Reads series in which I start reading books around foster care and compare them to my in-real-life experiences. The rest of this video is going to be books that I have not talked about in a video before. I am tired. I want to get this done, so this is probably going to be the laziest wrap-up I've ever done. Let's jump right in. First up is Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed. Yes, I decided to read this because of the reading rush fiasco, and it was totally worth it. This is a good book. This is all about a young Black woman who works as a nanny for this white family, or more like a babysitter, and she is asked to take the young toddler out late at night because of a family issue, and is accused of having kidnapped the child. The issue with the book is not so much around uh, that specific instance, more on the fallout wherein the white family and protagonist's new white boyfriend are trying to show how not racist they are. This is all about performative activism and performative allyship and the scene between two white characters going, no, you're the racist one, completely ignoring the fact that, yes, they're both doing racist things, will forever stick with me. Definitely suggest it. Up next is a book that I read also because of hype, but the hype didn't live up as much for me, and that is Cinderella is Dead by Kaylin Bayron. This is a fantasy YA in which the story of Cinderella is an actual historical fact. She lived and died, and everyone else kind of has to follow in her footsteps. The story of Cinderella is essentially like a Bible at this point, and I did not like it as much as I was hoping to. I think it might have been a case of the hype getting to be too much because this was touted as such a good feminist book tackling sexism. The problem is that the sexism in the book is so cartoonishly over the top, clear cut in black and white, that it doesn't really say anything about our current society and things like microaggressions or like little subtle ways. It's like, yes, every girl must wear fancy dresses and go to the ball and every girl must do this. And it was so unlike our world that it wasn't ever really making commentary on our world. I did appreciate the fact that the protagonist was, I believe, lesbian. I believe she doesn't really have any interest in men. And the romance that she has with a strange girl she meets was adorable. I appreciated that. And the ending was, it wrapped up a little too nicely. It seems like they solved the problem of sexism a little too quickly. But all in all, uh, if you like that kind of book, I would highly suggest it. Up next is A Blade So Black by Alan McKinney. I followed the author forever on Twitter, and then I discovered one day that I had a $10 gift card to Amazon from Donating Blood, and this book was at a sale for $10. So I'm like, it's fate! And I bought it, and I enjoyed it. This is Black Alice in Wonderland, wherein a young, I think they call them Dreamwalkers, has to go into Wonderland and fight big, bad creatures called Nightmares, that are essentially, yes, made out of humans' nightmares, but then her trainer handler, the Mad Hatter equivalent, falls ill and it's kind of to her fault and she has to solve it. I loved all of the comparisons to Alice in Wonderland. There's a lot of characters that are not outright told to be this character, but you can basically tell. Um, my favorite was the bartender that is the this world's version of the sleepy dormouse from the Mad Hatter's tea party. Um, but in general, was got, got real serious. It's, it's a lot of dealing with grief. Um, there's a lot of subtext that get very serious on things like police brutality, uh, because in her regular life, a girl, a black girl going home from, I think it was a football game, gets shot down by the police just by being in the wrong place at the wrong time. And so there's a lot of subtext of that's part of the reason her mom gets so freaked out when she's in Wonderland too long and and goes a long time without coming home. And so it's a lot more serious than you might think going into it, but I really enjoyed it and definitely intend on continuing the series. Up next was a book I read by Sunlight Alone because we lost power for five days. Thanks to Rachel. And that is 
Sooner Dead by Mel Odom. This is a sci-fi post-apocalypse dystopian and I believe it is based on a tabletop RPG called Gamma World, uh, kind of similar to Dungeons and Dragons but like more sci-fi-y. All about two scouts, Stampede and Hella, I believe, and, and Stampede is a lovely bison dude back there. Loved it. Uh, as they lead the team of scientists across the wastelands and start wondering what exactly these scientists are looking for and they begin to trust them less and less. I really enjoyed this one. Very impactful. I loved the relationship between the two scouts. Very found family-esque and I don't know if it's a series but I kind of want it to be because if it is I'm definitely looking up and finding more of these books. Up next was a 100% a palette cleanser and that is you Never Forget Your First Earl by Ella Quinn. This is a Regency era romance that was actually quite notable, uh, even though I found it in <laughs> the dollar store, uh, in which both characters actually want to be married. Yes, there is no widows trying to fight it, no men that are only getting engaged for getting a family member off their back. They both eagerly want marriage. The problem is, is that he wants marriage because he needs a wife to be a staff member to this British diplomat dude, and she actually wants a love match. So it's basically her trying to ferret out, does he actually want this for the right reasons, and can he ever come to love her? There's a lot more emphasis on the real uh, historical aspects and historical issues going on at the I think it was the tail end of the Regency era, and I really liked that part. Um, this is definitely one of those books where if you know the genre, you know this is kind of a standout, but uh, if you don't already know the genre, it's probably going to seem like a boring book to you. But either way, uh, really good read for being only a dollar. <laughs> Up next is the sequel to a book I read during the 24-hour readathon, so should I be talking about it? Probably not. But anyway, I read Written on the Wind by Kate Dean. This is the sequel in a cozy mystery series, and it's one of those issues where I really like the first book. It is your standard young American woman discovers that a great aunt has passed and left her an antique shop, and she goes there, and it's this quite little British town, but also people, like, regularly drop dead, and... She either knows someone or is the person that is under suspicion for it. Um, it was really, you know, cozy mysteries in general stretch believability. But I really liked the first one. And then this one, I, I don't know what it was, if it just raced through it and was trying to get to the end too fast or what. But I don't know if I'll be continuing with the series or not. Uh, maybe I'll leave it on the list of series I'll pick up if I'm really in the mood for that particular genre. But in general putting it on the back burner. Up next was one of my favorite books of the month because it's exactly my kind of sci-fi and that is Touched by an Alien by Jenny Koch. This is a mutant slash alien sci-fi all about a woman who walks out of jury duty, sees this random dude go into full super mutant and acting on instinct alone manages to kill him and find herself uh, entangled with this group of aliens that are trying to take these parasite mutants down. And it is just as strange as that premise makes it sound. And it's my favorite kind of sci-fi because it's that sarcastic, quippy, oh yeah, sure, this weird thing kind of sci-fi. Truly enjoyed it. And I'm going to be continuing with the series, hopefully. Uh, the only problem is, is that my library only had the first book. So I will likely have to use some kind of thrift store site to find the rest of them, but I definitely want to continue with it. It is just my favorite. So the last two books both uh, had the same struggles in that I'm like, oh, shifted romances. They have never let me down, but they both let me down. And I gotta get more picky. <laughs> so first up is A Mate for the Dragon by Zoe Chant. This is all about a young girl, well not a young girl, a young woman who is just been dumped by her boyfriend, goes into the woods for a nice getaway in this cabin she rented and stumbles across a strange man who JK is a dragon shifter who is also the last of his clan and they're mates. Yay! Uh, the problem with this is that the big conflict, that being that he is the last of his, his clan and the uh, big bads that took his clan down are still coming after him and the fact that they're mates it all goes way too fast. <laughs> like, they're pretty much head over heels in love like that. And this is one of those shifter romances where the shifter knows immediately, but the human doesn't. So the human should still be working at at least a semi-human speed falling in love. And also the big problem is solved really quickly. I would have rather this been like a series 
rather than anything else. But I was most disappointed because I've read this author before. Zoe Chant is the author of one of my favorite Shifter romance series, the Wildfire Shifters. And I was really hoping this would be more of the same. Unfortunately, you can really see the improvement in these books because this book was written farther back and you, you can see how much she has improved in the interim. So if I'm going to read any more by this author, I will probably stick to her newer stuff. And she is still an indie author that puts out a ton regularly, so still going to be more to read. But like anything more than a couple of years back, I, I probably won't do a lot with. And last, a book that I did not realize was the fourth in the series because I just saw it in the BookBub email and I thought, ooh, cool. And that is Her Professor Mate by Tasha Black. This is a werewolf-esque book, but not as werewolfy as a werewolf romance is. And again, it's one of those things where if you've read those genres, you know what I'm talking about. There's not as much obsession with dominance and subservience in, in this book as in most werewolf romances. This is all about a dude who's a professor who realizes after the fact that that young student teacher he had is his mate and he really wants to, you know, follow through with her being his mate, but she's really iffy about him and doesn't think the best of him. Once again, race through it. They're like in love within, you know, 30 pages. <laughs> And the big, big problem, which is her strange ability to see shadows and latent abilities and this strange man hanging around, is again, solved super quickly. Like, insanely quickly. And I need longer books. <laughs> I just, I, I've discovered that any shifter romance or any really indie romance under 150 pages is going to be too short because a at least like a decent sized chunk of those pages is going to be the excerpt for the next book. So you can't even guarantee that it's going to be a full 150 pages. So I think the new thinking is we're going to stick to books closer to 200 from now on and maybe find specific authors that I like and stick to them and, and not necessarily jump into something just because it's an indie chapter romance, which is going to be hard because I love them. Next day editing Margaret here. I was so out of it. I literally forgot a book. I also read Black Ice by Anne Stewart. This is what looks like a political thriller, but it's actually a romance about a woman who is supposed to be a translator for this group of businessmen, only discovers that they're actually like arms dealers, and one of them there falls in love with her. It wasn't the greatest. It doesn't have the greatest of reviews on Goodreads, uh, but it was slocky melodrama, which is what I needed at the time. And honestly, I'm just looking back at this month and being like, wow, I need to up the books I'm reading and take way more care in picking them. But yeah, there's that one as well. So that was my August. Um, a lot of things are going on. A lot of life changes might be happening. As I sit right now, I am looking at what could be a markedly different day-to-day -day life come the end of September and a lot of that is stuff that is not really up for discussion quite yet uh so check back in the September wrap-up and see how different everything got I am jumping right into Monsterathon of which I am a co-host for Team Conspiracies sci-fi what up so uh <laughs> please be on the lookout for that I'll have a wrap-up and a whole bunch of other stuff and I'm sorry that this one was so lazy uh that I ignored half the books I read <laughs> during the month of August but if you really want to know you can go watch that I mean I, I won't I won't say no to extra views on those videos uh regardless with nothing else to say I hope you have a wonderful day and a marvelous tomorrow